Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to push the limits of memory in a CoCalc project. And you'll see what happens, how to do that explicitly, and how to see that you're um, pushing the limits of the memory. So let's take a look at my CoCalc projects. I'm just going to start with a completely um, default project. So test the limits. And this will be starting, um, initially it'll just be an unlicensed project. It's completely a free project. The first thing you can check is the upgrades button. And this shows you what you have. So let me uh, shrink myself. Okay, so look here. We have, in terms of memory, one gigabyte of RAM. And you can click here to kind of see why you have that in a little bit more of an explanation. As this is a free project where I haven't explicitly done anything, uh, there's no upgrades, there's no licenses, nothing. Another really important tab is processes. If you click on this button, you'll see a page that lists all the processes, everything that's running inside of your project. And one of the things that it lists is memory. So there's something with, that's using 89 megabytes here and another one that's using eight megabytes there. That's um, an SSH server and the project itself is currently using 88 megabytes. Okay, so let's do something to start using some memory. So what I'm gonna do is make a Jupyter Notebook and I will select, for the kernel, I'll select the Sage kernel. It's relatively memory hungry and that will help with illustrating things. Now let's take a peek back at processes. If I click the little arrow here, it's nice because um, it will show the page uh, right next to this. Notice there's nothing new because I opened this notebook. Just opening a Jupyter Notebook in CoCalc doesn't use any memory or really cause anything to happen. However, if I do something like uh, try to factor the current year, then a kernel starts running. And this uses CPU and then it uses memory. And um, Sage takes a little while to start up. There might be subprocesses to get created. And You'll notice that it's using, um, first, there's an initial 260-ish megabytes of memory that are used for the Sage process that I'm using. And then there's actually another process that gets spawned, and that's put in place because if I restart this notebook, I want that to be really, really fast. And it's a common thing to do. And notice it's taking quite a while for this to start up the first time. So it's really nice to have a second one started and just waiting there. Um, so now notice we're using a total of over almost 600 megabytes of memory, which is almost close to our limit of um, one gigabyte. Let's make another Jupyter Notebook and see what happens. And again, I'll use the Sage kernel. I'll just do, I notice no memory used yet. Nothing's being used at all. And I'll do two plus three. This is going to start using a little bit of memory. Well, just using this other kernel that we spawned. Let's make yet another Jupyter Notebook. Oh, notice the pool in the background is spinning up another kernel so that um, it'll be a ready for when we make another notebook that is using uh, Sage. So there we are, and now let's do this yet again. Okay, and now we have three kernels. Um, we're still within the one gigabyte limit, so we're good. Uh, but it's starting to get a little bit nervous, and the um, the uh, kernel pool is spinning up an extra kernel. And now we're actually starting to get to the limits. Um, so I just switched to showing the full thing. The, this is useful information. It shows for each process the amount of memory it's using. Um, there are some subtleties, though. There can, uh, especially with forking of processes, there can be shared memory between multiple processes. So right now, we're using over a gigabyte of memory if you just add up the memory from each individual process. However, that doesn't mean that we've exhausted all available memory, even though our limit is one gigabyte. And that's because there's a little bit of overlap. There's like a Venn diagram where um, memory is overlapping. It's very similar between the two. And um, the memory is only really used when you make changes. So we can keep creating new um, Sage worksheets, or sorry, uh, Jupyter Notebooks using the Sage kernel, and eventually it'll hit the memory limit. Um, let me use a terminal and just show you 
a little bit more about exactly how much memory is being used. There are a couple of tools that are useful. There's top, and here I like to often hit capital M to sort by memory usage. And here you can see a little more detail than what we're seeing in the process monitor of CoCalc. Uh, notice it says that, for example, this these Python 3 processes, by the way, are the Sage Jupyter kernels. If you type lowercase c, you'll see that. That toggles displaying what's actually um, like a little more information about the command. But notice it says that in memory, uh, almost 275 megabytes are resident. And SHR, that means shared. So about 90 megabytes are shared. So this is overlap between these different Sage processes. So let's just create a few more. But soon, if we do this enough, we're going to definitely run out of memory. So new Jupyter Notebook, select the Sage kernel, do something uh, silly. And let's look at how it looks. So again, a little bit of shared memory, et cetera. So far, we're good though. Um, another thing we could do would be to make like a big, oh, look, we hit the limit. Uh, the combination of all the different Sage processes combined with, there's a little bit of overlap between them, hit the limit, and it ended up having to, uh, well, let's see. It just says it's really close to hitting the limit. It's a warning. Nothing's actually been killed yet, and the banner is really warning us that we're getting really close. Okay, let's make yet another one. And then remember, nothing happens until we start, until we do a little calculation. Okay, so we did that yet again. Um, it's always fun to look at top and just see all these processes with all this little overlap. And again, we're close to the limit, but even the first process that we started, it's still, um, it's still running. So let's make another, oh, look, warning, a program in your project crashed because it ran out of memory. So what happened here was one of these processes, it doesn't say which one, tried to allocate memory, the allocation failed, and then the program just said, I don't know what to do, I need memory, and so it crashed. And now we're really in trouble. We need to kill some processes, or we need to upgrade the memory of our project, and then that will involve restarting the project, at which point we can run more stuff. Um, so that's the situation with using up memory. So um, if we look closely, we can see that this is what's here. Um, we can look at each of these. You can kind of just keep trying to use stuff, but something did get killed. That's what this message says. Um, and I don't really know which thing, actually. It's a little unclear. Oh, actually, it's this one. It just, it's kind of random. Um, the kernel, the Linux kernel has, uh, you know, some very sophisticated algorithm that decides what it's going to kill. And in this case, this specific Jupyter kernel got killed, and I think all of the rest of them are still running. And you can see that they're using a lot of memory based on this slider. You can look here to see the memory usage. Okay, so what do you do at this point? Well, you just be aware of this is what will happen. Kernel could be killed because you run out of memory, and at that point, the process is no longer running. And you can see there's like a little red notification over here. This is just indicating, hey, we're in a situation where we're getting low on memory. There's also various links up here which give you ideas in terms of how to um, understand memory usage. Uh, if we're done with one of these Jupyter kernels, like maybe this one right here, you can just click uh, Halt. That's the button right here, which um, might... You can also go Close and Halt up here in the menu, Jupyter, Close and Halt. When you click that, it will terminate that process and close the tab. And if you do that a couple of times, so I'll do Halt this button, um, this one's already dead. Alt this button. And now if we look at the processes, notice it's no longer red. And if you look here, you'll see that there's less things listed. And if we look at top, we'll see that most of them are gone. Um, the thing at the top, this banner, which is warning us, it updates once a minute. And so we had to wait a little while for it to go away, but it did. And now we can dismiss this blue banner because um, we've dealt with the problem. 
and we're back where we were. By the way, you can also, if you actually want to use a lot of memory, you can click on the Upgrades tab, and then there's a lot of things you can do. One, you could use a pay-as-you-go upgrade. For example, you click Upgrade this project, and then let's say we want 16 gigabytes of memory. Just uh, type in 16 right there, and um, you don't need member hosting. So for three cents per hour, we could upgrade temporarily to have 16 gigabytes of memory. Um, or it's much better, you get much better experience if you have member hosting and then it's 13 cents per hour. So that's option one and uh, it involves, you know, somehow adding some money to your account. The second option is you can upgrade using a license that you already have. So you click this button and then you select one of your existing licenses if you have one. The third option is you can buy a license. You click buy a license, takes you straight to the store, then you configure your license and um, there are various presets. If you look at the expert configuration, you might choose 16 gigabytes of RAM and uh, there are other things. And you can select a very specific amount of time for your license. Like the license could start you know, from now for one day. And notice the cost is 45 cents to have a license that upgrades your memory and gives you member hosting for the next day. It's only 45 cents, um, which is actually a lot less than 13 cents times 24. So if you buy a license, you get a substantial discount and you can buy it for really any relatively short period of time if you need to, or you could just buy a subscription and then leave it there. And then for like a couple of dollars a month, you have all the memory you need. So if you buy the license, go through the checkout process. When you're done, that license is automatically applied to your project. Your project restarts, and then you have the upgrades that it provides. So that's option three. Option four is you could use a compute server. So that's over here. You click create compute server, and then there are a whole bunch of different options. We're using Sage. Um, and for maybe say 17 cents per hour, you can get a machine that has 16 gigabytes of memory but what if you need more than 16? Notice with all the upgrades, the limit was 16. But with a compute server, the limit is massive. Look at like, oh, I would like to have, let's say 384 gigabytes of memory. Boom, you can do that. You can actually get um, over a terabyte of memory if you want. I think there's some, like this one's 1 1.4 terabytes of memory. And if you, um, for a standard instance, it's pretty expensive, but you can use a spot instance in some cases. If you're, you know, if you're okay with the pro with what you're doing being interrupted, maybe after a few hours, you can switch to a spot instance, and then the prices are kind of ridiculously good. So um, look at this. I can get for ten dollars an hour six terabytes of memory, five thousand eight hundred eighty-eight gigabytes. So it's kind of like an absolutely massive amount of memory. Um, if you get a compute server, then what you do is you move your Jupyter Notebook to run on the compute server and it will use memory directly on that compute server. And you can even uh, play games where you, instead of, like you can choose from anywhere in the world. So it just happens to be that in the Netherlands, um, in, in um, Holland for $8.22 an hour, you can use this compute server and that's fine. Just choose one there, then that one particular Jupyter Notebook, you can run it on that compute server and you get it. Um, really nearly unlimited amount of memory and processes on a single machine attached to your project. So that's the fourth way of raising your memory. Okay, well, I hope that you enjoyed that and that you get a good sense of how to manage your memory in CoCalc from that little demo. Thank you.